Welcome to Compasses Modeling Using Numerical Methods. Today we'll be discussing Module 8B, Laminated Composite Structures versus Sandwich Structures. I have again invited Mr. Wade to guide us through the software portion of the tutorial. What is the learning objectives of this particular tutorial? We'd like to showcase that sandwich structures provide superior buckling performance compared to laminates. And in this case, in this objective, what you will examine is that when you have a sandwich structure, you have a thicker system. And this thicker system translates to thicker bending, to better bending performance than a laminate of thinner uh, configuration. And why does we have a superior buckling performance? We have a superior buckling performance because as you make the sandwich structure thicker or the structure thicker in general, you will see that the bending stiffness also increases. And bending stiffness is an important parameter in the buckling performance of any system. So here, I will now discuss the benefits of sandwich structures through an example tutorial. And what we'll examine now is a material system that's being considered. Here you can see a lamina AS48552 and the properties are provided here. Here the core materials are given and they're also provided, uh, they're part of this uh, paper as well. Core thickness is 0.5 inch. And now we're gonna dive in to the buckling tutorial. This is a payload attached feeding example. And this example came from this particular article. We'll assume the following dimensions based on that paper. 150 inch diameter base, 50 inch diameter top interface height, and the height is 100 inches. We'll assume a circular window that's protruding into this payload attached fitting. And the idea here is to calculate the buckling performance if I were to treat this payload attached fitting as a laminate versus if I were to treat it as a sandwich structure. For the laminate near the hole, we'll be using this stacking sequence, which is a 16 ply lip and a sandwich design, which is going to incorporate the same laminate above, but now we're gonna use a sandwich design instead with a core in between. Away from the hole, we'll use this particular stacking sequence and the sandwich design will have this stacking sequence where the core is in the middle and then this is replicated by symmetry. And in this particular example problem, what you will note is that we have a thicker design near the hole to be able to provide more stability near the hole because that hole decreases the bending performance locally. And so we don't want the buckling to occur in that region. We want to increase its capability so that the payload attached feeding can perform adequately in flight conditions. Now I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Wei. Thank you, Mr. Wei, and you all have a beautiful day. And I hope you enjoy this buckling tutorial, showing that sandwich structures provides a superior performance than laminate structures. Now there are some disadvantages that are discussed in the description below in a separate video that goes deeper into the theory of sandwich structures. You have a great day. The material property is providing this slice. So let's start it. So here is the geometry that we already talked about uh, in previous slides. Um, so for this chunk of the core, <clears throat> we make the top part uh, assign the metal and then the remaining part just uh, assign the material as uh, the slice shoes. So let's start it. So we will uh, use the previous uh, uh, model that we already built. So you can see the material property. We have the metal one that's only assigned here. And also the composite one, that is the laminate. Uh, the material property shows here. You can check that in the size. And also the core material. We also assign the, uh, we also uh, use the material that uh, shows in the slice. So you can say the E1, E2 modulus, that it's very soft. And in third, 
direction, which means normal to the surface is stiffer than the other two. Okay. Then we are going to build two new uh, composite layer. So previously we have uh, uh, like this eight layers and set a symmetric. The orientation shows here is exactly what list here. Okay. Now I'm going to build a new one. So first is near the hole. That actually we have 18 layers because they have the whole whole one. So for half of the uh, layers, so there will be nine layers. Then the reach of, oh, sorry, I need to first deactivate these two. Then we build nine layers so that we can select the region. Um, okay, we don't have this two. Then we just select this. Okay. <clears throat> The material, uh, we first uh, assign the composite material, that, that is a laminate material. And the last layer, we add it to change it to coral. And the thickness, for each composite layer, that is 0.09 inches. And the, the last layer, the coral layer, that thickness is 0.5. Then we build a half that will be 0.25, okay? Then we'll click this up. That will be symmetric. Then the angle, we just make a... First eight layer is the same as... Uh, here is one. Mm, wait a minute. So we make this uh, uh, core layer is uh, like uh, just zero degree, doesn't have orientation, okay? Then next, the lay layup orientation, we need to change it to the discrete, just as the previous one. Like for the surface, we can use the previous surface, like uh, the surface, we just select all the surface so that the third direction will normal to the surface. You can see this is a normal to surface. And also the one direction we want, one direction is the hoop direction. And it's from, if we view from top view, that will be clockwise. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, like this one. And then we reverse it. So that two direction will be from bottom to the top. That is what we want. Just click OK. Yeah, there's a one to the third directions here. OK, then that's all set. OK. And also, uh, for the remote region, we want to assign material. Shows here, nine, uh, first uh, four layers is the, uh, is the uh, uh, laminate material, and the last layer is chrome material. Then actually, I already uh, set up the model here. Uh, then you can double check this all these things. Sorry, I mean I already set up all the material assignments. Uh, like here, it's the remote region. Uh, then you can see that's it. That is the uh, highlight is uh, what I select the remote region that will be. Uh, 1975, 1975, zero, zero. The last one is Chrome, and also click this system which gone. Okay, okay. Then next, assemble. We don't need to change anything because we only change the material assignments. Then to the step, okay, we would like to deactivate previous uh, static generalize, and then we are going to create the buckle. Uh, step. The buckle step of how to create it like this. In the procedure type, choose the linear precipitation, then choose the buck. Okay, so when you click this in, uh, when you choose that in, so it will request you to uh, 
input a number, how many number of eigenvalues you want to request. So here we just uh, set as a five or 10, something like that. And here the maximum number iteration, default one is 30. Um, here I just set the sort of a large number. That's, that's okay. Right. <clears throat> Then we'll go to the load. So for the load boundary condition, we still fix the bottom and also set symmetric bounding. Um, this is symmetric about the axis uh, to these two edges. You see? Because we only build a half of the model. And for the load, we change a little bit. So this time we want the load in the vertical direction for the global, uh, in the global coordinate system, not along the surface. So that we still use the shear edge load, but in the traction tab, we use general. And here, the vector, we can input how the vector point out. So we want to point out in negative y direction. So now here we just, Make a zero, make it one. Okay. And the magnitude still keep uh, same as uh, our last setting. Then click OK. Then you can see the arrow is down, downward. Then the mesh you don't need to change anything. Then finally, you can run the job. So here I already run the two jobs. First the job is based on uh the material that's only the laminate at the hole and also the uh eight total eight layer laminate away from the hole then we can check uh, the eigenvalue so for the eigenvalue for the, this one is 0.1267 so we input it we just uh, maybe just put here Point one two six seven. Okay, and then the buckling buckling region is mostly likely uh most likely is near the hole. Okay, then let's say six seven five. Okay, then let's say our sandwich like material. Sandwich like material means uh, uh around the hole I use this nine layers and also remote region I use this five layers. That's the property will become uh, like this nine layer and five layer. If laminate only is eight layer, four layer, okay. Then we select the uh, results. Then we click the deformation. And then we can check the eigenvalue is 0 0.4267. And the bug, bug, uh, buckling region uh, is mainly happens at the, uh, the deformation mainly happens at the like this top part. Uh, what is that? 0.4267. Okay, in this case, we can compare this to the first second value. And then we find uh, the sandwich structure, the eigenvalue, value is larger than the laminate. Okay, that's all about uh, this video. Thanks for watching.